So if you're trying to learn GD&T and you want to find a kind of cheap resource to do it, I've got this question a million times, you know, what do I buy? What textbook? What version of the standard? What do I need as far as a reference? Well, the first thing I'll say is it's best to have a copy of the ASME standard. That's where all these textbooks are going to derive their information. The difference is that a textbook is always going to be longer because it's trying to explain, give you examples, give you applications, and some review questions. Whereas the ASME standard just states things and, you know, it's like a, a rule book, kind of. Now, the ASME standard itself doesn't differentiate, it doesn't tell you what's important, right? So it might have two paragraphs on something you never use and then a sentence on something everybody uses all the time. If you just have the ASME standard, it's really difficult to figure out where you would use something, what's important, you know, what really matters. Whereas a textbook will usually kind of say, hey, nobody really uses this. Be careful when you use this. This tolerance is really important. It should be on all sorts of different drawings. Now, as far as my recommendation, the 2018 uh, ASME standard, the newest one, is very expensive, over $200 uh, to buy it from ASME, whether you buy a PDF or the, the printed book. The 2009 standard is also very expensive. They're the same price. You can get it from ASME. You can sometimes find a 2009 on eBay, but it's only going to be, you know, like $50 less maybe. If you go back to 1994, that version, you can almost always find them on eBay or other book selling websites for $40, $50. That's a pretty good deal because most of the information is still valid. And if you make a drawing to the 1994 standard and you state that on the face of the drawing, you're good to go, right? You, you haven't broken any rules or anything. Uh, that drawing is valid. It's just saying, hey, use 1994 version to interpret this drawing. And lots of companies still do that. So I imagine, you know, if you're a student and you're just trying to learn this, that's a good way to go. When you go to a job interview and show them a, a test, a, you know, sample drawing you made, just explain to them, hey, things look a little different because I'm using 1994. If you have a great handle on the 1994 standard, companies aren't going to have an issue giving you a little bit of training to get up to speed on 2009 and 2018. Also, when you get the 1994 version of the ASME standard, which uh, looks like this, by the way, it's the teal version. I don't, they went to a different color this year. Uh, so the <clears throat> 2009-2018 version looked like this. They're blue and white. And then the 1982 and 1973 look like this. I have no idea why they went to a, a different color for the 1994 version. All right. But the advantage is that all of the textbooks that go with 1994 are going to be dirt cheap, right? Because every time the ASME standard gets updated, all the textbooks get updated and revised as well. So textbook companies that sell to colleges and schools, you know, don't we keep making the 1994 and 2009 version. They switch to 2018. College instructors like myself have to use the newest version. So you've got all these different uh, 1994 and 2009 textbooks floating around for almost nothing. So my recommendation is uh, Design, Dimensioning, and Tolerancing by Bruce Wilson. Great textbook. He's got the 2009 and 2018 version as well. I think the newest version is only like $125, but you can find this version that goes with the 1994 standard on eBay for five, 10, $15. It's a really good deal. And it's gonna give you those review questions, go through examples, explain things in a way the ASME standard just doesn't do that. Now, there's all manner of different textbooks out there. This is just the one that I've used through my career. Uh, there's plenty of other ones. They're all pretty good. Uh, they all basically do the same thing. So, you know, that's just up to your preference. The ASME standard, though, doesn't change. You'll want to have a copy of that. Now, aside from the printed books, there's always videos like mine that are totally free. You can watch any time for, you know, extra explanation. There's plenty of online courses, in-person courses, uh, virtual courses that you can take. I'd recommend a two or three day class and then you'll, you'll be in a good position to study the actual standard and have a better idea of, again, what's important, what's not important, when do you use what, you know, basically the, the framework of what you're looking at. 
So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite textbook is for studying GDNT.